All right, so Numba. So Numba is a sort of a big library and provides plenty of optimization routines, but maybe the thing that it's the most uh, well-known and useful for is their just-in-time, so JIT compilation, all right? And what it does is that it's fairly smartly programmed. It goes into your code. It tries to understand your code. And from that, it rewrites it in C and C++ and execute it for you, all right? But then, of course, it can only be so smart. So it works much better if your code looks like what other programmers do, all right? Because then the people who have programmed Numba have basically programmed Numba to react to classical looking code. So without further ado, let's try it. So I execute that, I import this. Now the JIT again, like profile, it's a decorator. So you put at JIT there. And I also add the little option, no Python equal true. That means that Numba, I tell to Numba that it should try to convert everything to non-Python, so to full C code. And if there is anything that it cannot convert because it doesn't understand my code well enough, then I tell it to fail. So that it kind of I kind of ensure that the optimization is not the best possible, but like top on a high level. So now what I do, you see here is my pairwise distance function for uh for uh numpy. I did not change a single thing, I kept the same the same function there. I just added at G there. Okay. And now I create some data here and now I will execute it and we will see what we get there. So it runs and you see now it takes one second. If you remember a little bit before, I think it was there already before, I think. I think it was in the other notebook, but for such a data, I can sort of tell you that um, it's actually, we have lost something. But the thing is that here with JIT, what we do is just in time compilation. That means that before it actually executed the function, Numba has understood the code and then translated it and then compiled it. And that in itself is fairly costly operation. So that's why it's slower. But now if we were to do that a second time, it has already done these steps, so it won't do it again. And so if I execute it the second time, now you see it's 11 milliseconds, all right? So it's an important thing uh, about Numba is that if you just do it to execute a function once, it will not be very useful. But if you do that to like, you know, execute a function plenty of time, it will, you will only pay the compilation price once. And so that's when now, if I were to indeed compare the NumPy version and the Numba version, remembering that the NumPy version is already much faster than the, than the, than the native version, you see that we have now a very, very, very nice gain there. Okay. And the cost for that was just one line of code. So if you ask me, that's a superb ratio in there. And that's, I would say that's one of the easiest sort of um, trick that I know of, like to just gain a lot of performance with just like minimal code usage there. Now, it kind of relies on the fact that our code is simple enough that Numba is able to apply its trick. If your code is a bit weirder, if you have a lot of external functions and so on and so forth, it can actually be harder to apply NumPy on it. Uh, no, uh, sorry, Numba on it. So keep that in mind, but very, uh, very, very, very nice uh, tool to know. Um, another little uh, uh, way of doing that, rather than rewriting your function and adding an at G there, you can also do something like this. So I can say there is now something called pairwise distance numba, which is the result of this call, where I give the function that I want to compile 
to numpy.jit, all right? The result is the same, okay? Now, in general, that's actually quite bluffing. It works very, very, very well. As I said, there are some cache, all right? Most external libraries are completely missing from Numba. That is, for instance, if you want to have like a Numba function, but inside that you want to integrate, I don't know, your favorite function from SciPy or from sklearn or whatever, it will fail because it will not have, they will not have ported this function into C, all right? And so they will only have the Python interaction, uh, sorry, interface to it. So that means that then the compilation will not really work well because you will have interaction between Python and C elements. Also, it works fairly well with NumPy, but not all of NumPy's code have been ported. You have here a little link to their documentation where they say what has been ported and what has not been ported. Most of the core and simple stuff have been ported. So for simple things, you don't have to worry too much, right? In general, I give you a couple of links there. Consider that if you want to do fairly simple operation and the simplest operation that you want to do, the better it will work, right? Um, and one thing even is that sometimes it pays to not even give it the NumPy code, but just to give it like super simple native Python code because Numba can be generally a bit, uh, let's say a bit better at understanding what you do. Like the, the simplest your code, the easiest is it to understand, the better Numba is able to optimize it. And here is it, uh, here it is demonstrated. So now I've taken the code for the native Python solution and just added the at JIT. And we see that now if we consider first the JITed version of the NumPy function and the JITed version of the native function, the JITed version uh, there, okay, we worked much better. Uh, let me check again. I think that there were some compilation. Yeah, there we go. So now without the compilation artifact, uh, the NumPy derived one is slower than the native derived one, all right? So there, you know, it also pays to come back to dump down, if you will, your implementation, keep it as simple as possible, because then the algorithm of Numba can understand it much easier. All right, so that's what I wanted to show uh, with this tool. It's really, really quite impressive and very simple of use. So I really recommend it wholeheartedly. Uh, but for some usage, as I think you will see during the exercises, it doesn't shine that well. For example, it works very well on simple stuff and it works very well on uh, on numbers, but not so much on other data types. Okay, any questions? Ah, there's a question by Victor. If I run a snake make pipeline, is the code will be recompiled each uh, rule executions? Uh, that's a great question. Normally, no. As long as uh, as long as the instance stays the same, it will not. Uh, now, with that being said, there are also if you want to be sure, if you want to spread this across different executable as one may want to, uh, there are ways, and I give a link here, to compile some number functions ahead of time. So you compile them once ahead of time, and then you're sure that they will never be recompiled while you run or as you create code or stuff like this. And that can be maybe a trick that can help you out in this 